Hi to all. Uh, I am Dr. Hari Aran, Professor of Pharmaceutical Biotechnology. Uh, today we are going to discuss about one of the novel technologies of this current era that is RDNA technology. So we may call this RDNA technology as genetic engineering, cloning, gene cloning, anything. But uh, what is the basic concept of this RDNA technology? So today in my lecture what we are going to learn is three things. So first one is what is meant by RDNA technology or cloning or gene cloning in other words I can call it. Second is what is the historical development of this RDNA technology and third is what are the steps involved in this RDNA technology. So I will come to my first slide that is uh, what is meant by a clone. So whenever I talk about the word clone the mind what it will come into your mind is a sheep so it is the sheep we call the name we call it with the name called dolly so everybody knows the dolly sheep so dolly sheep is the first mammalian clone has been developed from a somatic cell now the question arises what is mean by a clone so clone is nothing but an identical copy of a gene or a um, cell or a organism itself. So clone is nothing but we are making a multiple copies of the same gene or same cell or a same organism. So whenever we talk about this clone or cloning concept then our knowledge about cloning what is meant by gene cloning comes into the mind. So what is meant by gene cloning? So gene cloning evolves by a three basic concept. So gene cloning is nothing but simply we are separating a part of DNA from the chromosome called as gene. So what is meant by a gene then the question arises. So gene is the functional part of the DNA that means a gene codes a particular protein which will be a particular characteristics of an organism. So this gene has been separated from the DNA then it has been inserted into a carrier molecule which is also an another DNA molecule which may be a plasmid or a bacterial vector. This we will discuss elaborately in a separate lectures. So we will integrate this both the things that is the gene and the carrier DNA molecule. Once we join we call this a clone or we call as a gene cloning otherwise we can call as a recombinant DNA. Then it is made it into multiple copies by insertion into a host cell which may be a bacteria or a fungi or any type of cells. So this entire concept has been actually developed by a group of scientists mainly the contribution of this entire DR DNA concept I can give to Paul Berg, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen who has done various innovative ideas to make this technology into a separate branch of science. So now I come to my next part of the slide. What is the historical development of this gene cloning or the RDNA technology has been happened. So then once we talk about the historical development then the first step comes is about the uh, isolation of DNA from a chromosome that was a very simple step that has been easily done by many people starting from the identification of the nuclein uh, the DNA has been isolated so but the most uh, important part comes is that the chromosome carries numerous genes so we have to identify the gene of interest and we have to cut the gene of interest so the cutting of gene of interest can be done only with the identification or discovery of an enzyme called restriction endonucleus. So for the first time this enzyme that is the restriction endonucleus has been identified and isolated in 1960 by three scientists that is Werner Arbor, Hamilton Smith and Daniel Nathans. So this enzyme they have isolated from bacteria and they have studied this characteristics later on Nathans itself make the classification of this restriction engines. So what actually this restriction engines was present in the bacteria. So actually bacteria also get infected by viruses called as bacteriophage. Once a virus infects a bacteria what happens is that the virus will insert its DNA into the 
bacteria so the the incoming nucleic acid material might be it may be a dna or rna that should be destroyed so these restriction engines were destroying this dna by cutting or cleaving into small pieces so the discovery of by the smith nathanson arbor uh, made this restriction engine can be used for precise cutting of the dna or the gene of interest so the discovery of restriction engine becomes an important part later on it was successfully isolated by herbert boyer from the e coli in 1969 and has been widely used for the cutting of dna that is named as e core 1 so after that herbert boyer along with stanley cohen so developed a carrier molecule that i can call as a plasmid so already uh, once we study about the bacteriology the plasmid already exists in the bacteria we call as an extra chromosomal dna of the bacteria like the extra chromosomal dna uh, is present in mitochondria of the humans like that uh, a double stranded circular dna is present in bacterial cells we call as plasmid and this plasmid generally transfers from one bacteria to another bacteria and produces the desired characteristics of the bacteria so since this ability has been explored by the stanley cohen and herbert boyer and they have developed a plasmid called as psc101 so this psc101 has various restriction sites in which this plasmid has been cut into parts then the dna has been inserted and this can be delivered to a bacteria so it can multiply on its own so the major tools which is needed for our dna technology that is the restriction endonuclease next the plasmid has been identified later on there was a biggest tremendous contribution also done if uh, we don't have a dna if you have an rna what we have to do so can we able to convert an rna into a dna so this has been identified separately in 1970 by howard temin renato de blacco and david baltimo separately an enzyme called reverse transcriptase from the retrovirus so the retrovirus is a virus which is generally carries rna as the genetic material so once the infect a cell what happened this first this rna gets converted into a dna by the enzyme called reverse transcriptase then this dna gets integrated into the host cell then it multiplies it so what happens this enzyme discovery make a tremendous contribution so what we can able to do is we convert the mrna into a cdna then this dna can be used as a gene for the cloning so this this discovery was an important one later on after the discovery by this baltimore then the major contribution was done by edwin sadan so in 1975 sadan developed a technique called as hybridization we also called as sadan blotting technique uh, that means uh, we have cut the dna but we have got the uh, numerous pieces of dna out of this numerous pieces which one is our gene of interest should be identified this was a big uh, issue for the time biotechnologists how to identify this dna so edwin sadan developed a technique called blotting in which he has used a probe dna that means a dna molecule has two strands so he has used one strand as a probe so that strand complementarily binds with the next strand so thereby the gene can be identified easily so he has developed a technique called the sudden blotting specifically identified the dna so in my diagrammatic representation you can see that the sudden blotting is a very simple technique he has developed what we have done is he has isolated the dna restricted the dna run the dna into a gel electrophoresis separate it then he has transferred into a nitrocellulose paper then with the help of a probe dna uh, which is a radio labeled one if any for any strand has been a complementary to each other it has been identified by an auto radiography thereby the gene of interest has been identified so after this the major we can we can call it as a very big discovery in the terms of biotechnology is done by carry mullis in 1980s with the discovery of the polymerase chain reaction that is 
a single piece of dna can be amplified exponentially uh, in a in vitro manner to a uh, numerous amount of dna that means he this technique that is the polymerase chain reaction is nothing but uh, doing the uh, dna replication process inside the uh, thermocycler inside a lab equipment so he developed this technique so the amplification of dna was not a problem so even though we get a single piece of gene that gene can be made into a required amount for our study by the name of amplification of his dna so how he has done it is a simple diagrammatic representation as you can see it so we have a single strand of uh, single double stranded dna so in that we are adding the enzyme that is the dna replicase which is a dna polymerase which is a replicating enzyme then we add the dntps that is atp ctp gtp and ttp then we provide the respective conditions of temperature and a particular time duration for the denaturation of this dna into two single stranded one then the primers get annealed with the both the thing then what happens next is that the the two single stranded one then becomes a starting synthesizes an another new strand so so one dna molecule double stranded dna has been produced to two double stranded dna if the same process has been repeated and repeated again we can get an exponential increase in the dna molecule so this was the basic idea about it so then we Uh, this discoveries especially by uh, pcr development by carry mullis and edwin southern by southern blotting and mainly developed by temin dibalco and baltimore has various scientists has made the contribution to develop this technology as an one of the innovative technology in the pharmaceutical industry as well as in the medical field because this technology has revolutionized every area so uh, since we are discussing with uh, with respect to pharmaceutical biotechnology and medicine only so this contribution has developed in the development of insulin human growth hormone and in medical field like gene therapy and already it is fruitful in the agricultural field by getting genetically modified crops in diagnostics this discovery of our dna technology has made us to uh, make their comfortable living standards so next part of my lecture is about the what are the steps involved in this rdna technology so once i talk about the steps involved in this rdna technology uh, the basic uh, first we understanding the basic definition what is the legal definition of this rdna technology has been given otherwise i can call it as a gene cloning so actually the legal definition has been put forward by the uk government in their legislation that uh, what is meant by a gene cloning is that it is nothing but the formation of new combination of heritable material that means uh, dna uh, by the insertion of nucleic acid molecules produced by whatever means outside a cell that means uh, what they are telling is the formation of new combination of heritable material that means i am getting a new heritable material that means new genetic material that is a new combination of dna that is called as r dna uh, by the insertion of nucleic acid by whatever means by however i will insert the nucleic acid uh, outside the cell that means i have not doing this work inside a cell instead of taking into a laboratory i am doing an outside a cell uh, uh, where i am combining it is further the definition tells that into any virus that means i am inserting this heritable material outside the cell that means in a laboratory where i am inserting it says i am inserting into a virus or a bacterial plasmid or any other vector system so by doing this what i am doing is i am in a lab i am manipulating or i am i am artificially creating a new recombinant dna so so this this created our dna will allow their incorporation in the host organism so since i have make a dna molecule if i insert into an another host organism that organism should take up this dna molecule it should not destroy it by its restriction endonuclease activity so it has to take up by the host organism that organism which it does not naturally occur this dna molecule should not naturally occur in that organism but 
it has to be capable to propagate that means this definition will make it very strict and very clear definition about the gene cloning so i will repeat once again what actually this definition is telling that so we are forming a new combination of dna that is our dna by means of insertion of nucleic acid that means by we are inserting a nucleic acid consider a gene uh, produced by whatever means outside the cell that means i have taken this gene isolated then this gene restricted identified it whatever i have done it outside the cell then what i am doing is i am inserting into a virus or a bacterial plasmid or a uh, any other vector system then next what i am doing is i am inserting this into a host organism in which it is naturally not occurring that means i am artificially putting inside after that it has to propagate to its daughter cells if this has been satisfied in all the perspectives then it is considered as a gene cloning so now i come to the steps so what are the various steps involved in the gene cloning so once i tell the various steps is first step is so we have to isolate the dna from your cell so we have a, we have to get a cell from the cell by whatever means we have to isolate the dna then we have to purify the dna and second step it comes that we have to cut the dna so first we have isolated and purified it then the second step is we have to cut the dna so how we have to cut it we have to cut the dna at the precise location so that the gene is not get disturbed this can be done with the help of a uh, enzyme called restriction endonuclease so we are cutting the dna with the help of a restriction endonuclease then once we have cut it in a test strip we are having the uh, fragments of dna so next step is comes the separation of the dna so the separation of the dna can be done with the help of a gel electrophoresis is an equipment uh, based on the charge and the mass the uh, the fragments of dna get separated so we can get the individual fragments of dna as a band after that what we are going to use we have to identify of out of this fragment which is our gene of interest so this can be done with the help of a southern blotting so after the gene of interest has been identified so it has be it has been purified and kept separately so the restriction enzyme what we have used for cutting this uh, gene more or less similar restriction enzyme should be used for restricting a vector so that we can fit this gene very precisely with the vector so we are next steps comes is the restriction of the vector using the restriction endonuclease then we are joining this gene of our interest with the restricted vector once we put it then it will get annealed with the help of an enzyme called dna ligase so our next step is the joining of the vector by a dna ligase then once we have joined this our dna gene outside in the lab next is we have to put it into the host organism so we can be put it into the host organism by whatever means by a physical means using a electroporator or a biological means uh, with the help of a uh, viral viral infection or by means of a chemical means using a calcium ion so we can get inside into the cell so insertion of dna into the host cell should happen next is this we have to identify this one so after insertion whether it is stable and the replica uh, uh, we have to identify if the clone is inserted properly into the host cell and the other wild strains should be removed this can be done with the help of a replica plating technique and Id- after the identification of the rdna clone then it has been propagated to produce maximum number of copies of this rdna clones so this finishes our entire steps of a dna this i have uh, illustrated in the picture as you can see in the first step we are isolating the dna and the purifying the dna from the target cell the next we are cutting the dna with the restriction endonuclease then we separate the dna by gel electrophoresis so once we have separated we have identified by the southern blotting technique so based on this identification we take up the gene separately then similarly we are isolating the plasmid and the plasmid has been restricted with the similar enzyme then it is joined together with the help of a dna ligase enzyme so the gene and the vector is cloned and we got a rdna 
this rdna has been inserted into the host cell so that it can propagate it so the host cell after identification it is propagated to get say identical gene in a maximum quantity so this is our lecture so thank you very much for patiently listening my lecture so in each and every step we will discuss in the future lectures thank you very much bye